Hey, what's going on? Shep at Iron Anchor Cycles, and we're back with another installment in our Project Lowrider S video. So this is gonna be a quick one, and it's pretty much a follow-up to our uh, last segment, which was when we cleaned up the tail section here and did a new integrated turn signal from Custom Dynamics, our lay-down license plate bracket, as well as deleting the rear turn signals, and covering up the holes with these uh, cover-up plates from Cycle Visions. So in that video, uh, if you watched, you'll know that I mentioned a couple of things that we were gonna follow up on, and number one was that I wasn't totally happy with how these looked, uh, that they didn't quite match the outline of the hole as perfectly as I would have liked, and that I thought a set of fender strut lights from Ally Art might just be the perfect thing to complement this, ta this tail light. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we've got a set of these here, and hopefully you can see that, and camera focused up nicely. Um, we're gonna go ahead and install these fender strut lights from Ally Art onto the bike today and uh, replace these uh, block off plates that we'd put on. So what that's gonna involve is taking uh, the fender struts off one more time. We'll do them one at a time. And we're gonna put these lights in and we're gonna get a little bit creative with the wiring and show you exactly what we're gonna do. Uh, these lights are wired so that they will function as run break turn lights. You've got uh, four wires to do that rather than just as turn signals, which is what the wiring in the fender struts originally was uh, there, there and set up to do. You can get a triple play uh, controller from Custom Dynamics that will turn your turn signal feeds into run and break feeds as well. And those can be had pretty inexpensively, but we don't have one here today. And I also just figured this is an opportunity to do something a little bit different. So we're just gonna wire this up ourselves and make it a little bit uh, custom with the way that we uh, tap into the harnesses so that we can get all these wires connected back under the seat and get the full functionality out of the lights. Um, in addition, the fender will still be removable. We're not just gonna solder these connections and we're gonna put uh, plugs for quick, quick disconnects on there. And this is gonna work the way it should. Fender will still be removable uh, for when we wanna go in and do some other stuff. And I think it's gonna work pretty well. One other thing I wanted to touch on before we get into this is, I know I had mentioned uh, some things about this silver or chrome tail light base plate that we tried to replace with a black one from Custom Dynamics, which wound up not fitting. And I was a little bit surprised by that. And so I dug in and did a little bit of research as to why that is. And I found a pretty interesting answer to that question. So basically every tail light that's out there, the square back tail lights from Harley uh, are the same and use the same base plate. These are the late model ones I'm talking about. I wanna say 99 and up. I might be a little bit off on that year, but pretty close to that. They're all the same, except for these. Uh, and when I say these, this is um, Lowrider S and the new Lowriders up until they were discontinued. So you kinda gotta ask yourself, why does this exist in chrome and not in black? And why would Harley make a brand new part for this bike when they've got you know, uh, all these other different bikes that are running around with this other part. Why would they do that? So the answer is they didn't do that. And this part actually is older than you would think. So this is where the story gets a little bit interesting. And I'm sorry if this is a tangent that nobody's interested in, but uh, I, I find it kind of amusing. So when you look up this part number in the parts book for this bike, which is a 2021, the part number for this this taillight base plate ends in a dash 12, which means that's the year that it was introduced. So why on earth would a part that only fits bikes that have been in production the last couple of years date back to 2012 when it doesn't fit any other bikes? And the answer is it does fit another bike. And the bike that it fits is, I wish I could put a drum roll in here, the old Switchback. That's right, the Dyna Switchback, the weird outlier of the Dyna family that only existed for a very short period of time uh, that they created apparently a different uh, setup in the back for. This is the taillight base plate from that bike. So ask yourself why that is on this bike. And well, the only answer I can come up with is that uh, if you go back to the, uh, the warehouse uh, back in Wisconsin or wherever it is, there were probably about a million of these things that they had made and didn't use and needed to find something to do with them. So they wound up having it fit these new bikes that they were creating rather than uh, have to create something new. So kind of a weird little piece of trivia there. Um, so 
The, that's a, a long way of saying there is not a black aftermarket replacement for this, and there is not a black Harley P&A replacement for it either. It's pretty easy to understand why that is, because at this point, with the lowrider discontinued and only the lowrider S in production, this is the only bike currently in production that this taillight base plate fits. So can't really see a company wanting to spend the time to tool up machining or molding or whatever you gotta do to make plastic parts to make a part that only fits one bike. So for the time being, it's gonna stay silver. I think what we're probably gonna do is just wind up painting it uh, cause this just can't stay silver. That's just not gonna fly for me. So it's gonna be black one of these days, but it's probably gonna involve just taking off the one we've got and painting it. So. Uh, that is, like I said, a long story to get to a short answer, but in any event, we're gonna get started with these uh, lights, and the first thing I'm gonna do is go over to the workbench and work on the harness. I'm also gonna start taking some stuff apart here to get access to what we need and just take a look at uh, you know, what plugs and things like that we wanna use, so uh, I'll check back in and show you where we're at. All right, so here's our uh, first side that we did. Uh, obviously, the uh, left side is still on here, and this is our right. So I'll zoom in a little or move closer so you can see what we're looking at. Um, that is how that's gonna look on there. I think that's pretty, uh, that's pretty slick and pretty clean. So a couple of call outs. Um, how the wires run through the strut is pretty simple. It's just the way the OE ones did. Um, but we did have to get a little bit creative here in terms of routing this wire nicely. Um, hopefully this is gonna be visible. Um, we put a notch here in the uh, fender strut in order to get the wires from the light to go under and in. There is a hole where the original wires ran, uh, that's here, but the wires for the OE turn signal are behind the bolt, whereas the wires for the, I'm sorry, I'm doing this based on how I'm looking at it. If you're thinking about the orientation of the bike, the wires for the OE turn signal are in front of the bolt, and the wires for the alloy art turn signal are behind it. So in order to get the wires in, if you ran these wires on the outside of the strut, you'd wind up with a gap uh, here and this wouldn't sit flush. So all we did was just took the grinder and made a little notch here and then put some, we did file it down to make it smooth, but then also just to be extra sure, um, we put a little uh, wire um, uh, shrink, heat shrink on the wires in order to protect them from any sharp edges. So that's in, we put the hardware back on, this is good to go, we ran the wires through, and they're gonna come up and inside under the seat the way the original ones did. So we're gonna go over to the other side of the bike now, and uh, we're gonna mount this back on, and we're gonna work on the wiring, and then once we get this side done and we test it out, we'll go on and do this side as well. All right, so what we've got here is our wiring just about finished up. We went ahead and like I did on the one side, did the same on the other and routed, mounted up the turn signal and routed it up through the fender strut. And we've got the left side harness coming across over here and then the right side harness is right here. And then we had to make our wiring connections. So we're not quite done here. I'm gonna uh, tape this up nicely to cover up all these open wires, but I just wanted to leave it open for a moment just so I could kind of point out what we did. So basically what you've got is one side and the other side, and there's four wires in each one. You've got a turn signal and a ground, and we made new uh, plugs that are the same as the factory turn signal plugs, one for each side, so one here and one here. And these are gonna plug into, in our case, the little pigtails, um, that were extra on our custom dynamics uh, lowrider taillight harness. Or if you don't have this, these will just plug right in to where your factory turn signal's plugged in. So that's real easy. So then we had two other wires we had to deal with for each side. Um, one is your uh, running light wire and one is your brake light wire, orange and red respectively. And so what we did with those is we just tapped those into the taillight harness. So. You can see you've got a ground wire that we didn't touch. You've got your brake light wire that's here. That's the blue with the red stripe. We've got our reds connected to, and then the blue wire, which has the orange wires connected to it. And we did this on the tail light side, or I'm sorry, the fender side of the harness, not the bike side, so that hopefully what you can see here is that 
uh, this is all still removable and we can unplug this last piece which is the turn signal connections for the integrated tail light and all of this would remain connected to the fender so like I mentioned the tail section is still totally modular and removable so the benefit there is if we ever need to do anything back there uh, that involves taking the fender off we're not going to be stuck with a whole bunch of wires that we're then going to have to cut and solder back together so from here what we're going to do is uh, just like I said, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up these wires and get them protected. We'll get everything all in here nicely placed and we'll test it out and we'll show you what it looks like. All right, so we are all buttoned back up and ready to test this out and show you what we've got. So just a little recap of where we were. Obviously we went ahead and put the Alloy Art fender strut lights on. We wired them through the fender struts and then made our connections under the seat. And the whole premise here was that we had put on the integrated turn signal from Custom Dynamics, but wanted a little bit more uh, light in terms of uh, turn signals that were a little bit more obvious. And we're also obviously getting a run and brake function out of this too, which is really cool. Um, we still get what we wanted uh, from the very beginning, which was cleaning up the rear tail section and getting those uh, big kind of factory turn signals out of there. So this does what we wanted it to do and it looks really slick and it works really well. So. A couple of details, you know, I talked about in terms of, you know, we did a little bit of custom wiring under there. We made some plugs and we did some soldering. You don't have to do as much of that if you get a triple play from Custom Dynamics and you can just run all the functionality of these lights out of the turn signal wire, um, which is pretty cool. One thing I'll show you though, and we'll come back to that, is uh, we've got, like I said, light, light, light. That works great. Um, obviously, brake lights. We've got all three of them working there. And then where the cool factor I think comes in in terms of wiring this the way we did it versus with the triple play is turn a turn signal on there. Um, hopefully you can see that the turn signal on the fender strut is amber and as opposed to the red running and brake lights which matches what we've got going on in the tail light. So there's one side, there's the other. So if you run the triple play and you're running all the functionality through one wire, you're only gonna get one color. And that's okay, and there's certainly no problem with that. Uh, you could have you know, red turn signal bulbs rear facing is no big deal. Um, and frankly, I've got a bunch of bikes that we've done it that way on and it works great. Uh, but if you run it this way and you use all the individual wires, you can capitalize on the dual functionality of the uh, dual color bulbs in the, uh, Fender, Fender strut lights from Alley Art. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, that is gonna do it. Uh, go ahead and turn this off. Pretty simple thing to undertake. It takes a little time. You know, you've gotta get your, your soldering gun out and everything else, but it's very, very doable. And uh, of course, if you've got any questions on it, we'd be happy to help you out there. Uh, either just give us a call, shoot an email, or stop by if you're local. So. That's gonna be it for this installment on the build series. Uh, hopefully we'll get into some bigger, more complicated and more fun stuff down the road. Uh, but for now, uh, ride safe and we'll see you next time.